Hi. The purpose of this tutorial is to show how to unwrap a globe into two hemispheres. This tutorial is based on the UV Map Basics tutorial in the Blender 3B Noob to Pro wiki book. The URL is in the YouTube notes as well as the Blender 3dvideos.blogspot.com, the website for my tutorials. Why do we need this tutorial? The reason UV mapping was introduced way back in Blender 2.34 and has been extensively rewritten since then. The user interface and many terms have changed over time. As examples, UV's face select mode disappeared in Blender 2.46 and the term LSCM, least squares conformal mapping, was used up until then. Now, LSCM is simply called unwrap. Many unwrapping tutorials were based on earlier versions. So if you try to follow along in the current version, 2.49b, you can get confused. Hopefully, this video will help to show the steps to successful UV unwrapping in the version most of us use. So let's get started. Here's the default scene in Blender 2.49b. Delete the default cube. Right click then press X and confirm the delete. Add an icosphere. Space, add, mesh, icosphere. Accepting the default of two subdivisions. Scale it three times, S3, to make a large globe. Let's smooth the globe out. From the editing buttons, F9, press Set Smooth. Then we'll add a subsurf modifier at level 2. We'll split the 3D viewport horizontally by clicking on the border, right click, selecting split, positioning the vertical line to where the split should be, and pressing enter. Make the left window a UV image editor window. Click on the border of the user preferences window and drag down to show the user preferences. Click View Name so we can see the view name, which is Top Ortho. Then click on the border and drag up to free up the area for the 3D view. Tab into Edit Mode and press the A key to deselect all vertices. We're going to make a seam for the UV editor to split the sphere into two parts. To do that, press Num3 to go into Side View. So that's actually right view and orthographic. We're going to box select the vertices at the equator so that when the sphere is unwrapped, the UV unwrap program will know how to split the sphere. So box select using the B key, box select the vertices at the equator and press enter. Press control E which brings up the edge specials menu and select mark seam. Press the A key to deselect the seam, and the A key again to select all the vertices. Press the U key, which brings up the UV calculation menu. Select Unwrap. This is actually LSCM Unwrap, masquerading under a simpler name. There are many other ways to UV unwrap an object, as you can see, and you can try them at your leisure. So when you accept it, the sphere is unwrapped in the UV image editor window. The easiest way to actually place the image onto the sphere is to export the unwrapping map to an image editor, such as Photoshop or the GIMP. I use the GIMP, but Photoshop will work just as well. To do this, from the UV's menu item, select Scripts and choose Save UV Face Layout. Accept the default of 512 by 512 pixel map, which is perfect both for non-game and game use in Blender, and save the file. It's a Targa image file into your project directory. Now open up the GIMP. Here are the steps I found that seem to work well. First, open up the saved file we just created. Then open up the image to apply to the sphere. You can download the globe hemisphere image, blue marble 2001-2002.jpg, from the UV Tutorial Wiki page. Go to the Targer file first, 
and find the diameter of the spheres that we need to fit the image to. You can see it in the bottom left corner. The diameter is 270 pixels. Switch to the blue marble JPEG, the one containing the two globes. Choose the Ellipse Select tool and turn on Fixed Aspect Ratio checkbox to make sure we will do a circle select. Select the left globe. Copy, Control C, the globe to the clipboard. Switch to the Targa reference file. From the Edit menu, select Paste As, choose New Layer. Press Enter to confirm. Click on the Move tool, the one with the crosshairs, and move the globe to the center of the top series of triangles. From the Layer menu, select Scale. Enter 272. I like to go a pixel or two more than the actual diameter to make sure we don't get any background artifacts included. Press Scale and position the expanded globe over the layout if necessary. Now go back to the blue marble JPEG and choose the Circle Select tool. First select None to deselect the left globe. This time circle select the right globe. Copy, it's Control C, the globe to the clipboard. Switch to the reference file. From the Edit menu, select Paste As and choose New Layer. Choose the Move tool and move the globe to the center of the bottom set of triangles. From the Layer menu, choose Scale and scale the globe 272 pixels as well. Now press Control L to bring up the Layers menu. There are three layers, the original reference image and the two globe layers. Deselect the original reference image by clicking on the eye. Close the Layers menu. We can now save our file. We'll make it a JPEG, which will be just the two hemispheres. We'll call it FinalGlobe.jpg. Accept the Flatten Image dialog because that's what we want, and click on Export and accept the defaults. Now go back to Blender. From the Image menu, open the Final Globe JPEG. You might need to make some last-minute tweaks and eliminate some dark background artifacts, but maybe not. Press the shading buttons, F5, add a new material. Click the text face button to tell the renderer to use unwrapped UVs. Press F12 to render. From here, you might need to add a lamp. If you go into texture mode, you can see the image on the sphere. That's it. I hope this gives you the basics of UV unwrapping a globe image and gives you some ideas for its use. If you want to create games and neat images, this is essential because Blender's game engine requires UV textured images. Happy blending!